Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. This is the Hey Ed YouTube channel, and I am your host, moderator, and all-around nice guy, Edward Anderson. Okay, so today we need to talk a little bit more about CBDCs. And I'm going to bring you some sound bites from the horse's mouth that will illustrate the evil of these products. Now, for those of you who are just hearing about CBDCs for the first time, CBDC is an acronym for a central bank digital currency. A lot of countries around the world have already developed their CBDCs, including our own. And there is a big push right now to convert our societies from physical fiat currency, in our case, the dollar, into digital currencies. But don't confuse this digital currency with other digital currencies. One of the big arguments out there is by the proponents is that eh, it's an it's just another digital currency, but these ones will be run by the government. No, they're not like other digital currencies. Bitcoin is decentralized and is non-programmable, where the digital currencies are going to be centralized and programmable. Programmable is the operative word here, and that is the essence of, of the evil of this product. And the whole world, the, the, the world elites right now are, are pushing for these CBDCs to become a reality. And the Federal Reserve is part of the cabal. So the three big agencies pushing these are the, the WEF, the IMF, uh, and the Federal Reserve, and every other central bank out there. In a recent meeting with the IMF, they had a discussion panel where they talked about CBDCs, and I watched the whole thing so that you don't have to. <laughs> but I am, but I want to highlight a few sound bites that proves my point. You don't have to take my word for any of this. So let's take a look at a few key sound bites. Please welcome Queen Maxima. If designed and implemented with inclusion in mind, CBDCs could offer many options to expand access to the underbanked and to serve the vulnerable and the poor. So right away, all right, <laughs> they're couching this, okay, they're framing this as uh, a benefit for the poor. And the whole theme here on this is about inclusion, financial inclusion. So they're cloaking the evil of the CBDC uh, with this patina of goodwill and looking out for the poor. All right, let's go back. Financial inclusion often starts, but does not end with the ability to make and receive payments. As we know, traditional financial services create many roadblocks for the poor, such as high transaction fees, minimum account balances, or formal proof of identification. New, new digital financial services also face obstacles for the poor, such as low level of trust in digital systems, among other challenges. CBDCs could help provide the best of both worlds. So again, <laughs> the CBDC is a solution for those people who, out there who are too poor uh, and too stupid to realize what's good for them. But wait. There's more. Uh, I'm Kathleen Hayes. I'm your moderator. I tell people it's like being at a giant cocktail party where you see someone across the room and you go to say hi to them and you're on your way over and then you see somebody else. <laughs> okay, so just hilarious. This shows you how disconnected these people are. This symposium is supposed to be how to benefit the poor, the poorest in our world. And in order to make herself relatable, she talked about these cocktail parties that she goes to with the rich and famous people. And there are so many important people, she can't decide who to talk to first. Yeah, very relatable. <laughs> I use digital payment platform for over 60% of my transactions. We must remember that more people have access to mobile phones than they do bank accounts in developing countries. I think a central bank digital payments app that prioritizes interoperability and accessibility can really leverage the uptake of mobile phones in low-income countries to drive financial inclusion. Okay, so they have all these young people talking about how wonderful this new financial system is going to be and the word inclusion inclusion, inclusion, okay? This is gonna solve all the problems of the poor out there and people who are too stupid to know what's best for them. 
Okay, but now we come to the truly evil clip. I want you to pay attention to this next gentleman because what he is going to say is going to send shivers down your spine. And finally, the third way we think CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. Did you hear that? Programmability. That is a very important word. Listen to this. The third way we think CBDC can improve financial inclusion is through what we call programmability. That is, CBDC can allow government agencies and private sector players to program, to create smart contract, to allow targeted policy functions. For example, welfare payment. Are you listening to this? Programmability. It's going to allow them to target certain areas of the society. Let's listen to that one more time, because this is the essence of CBDCs. By programming CBDC, those money can be precisely targeted for what kind of people can own and what kind of use this money can be utilized. Okay. So don't kid yourself. They're not going to stop with welfare recipients telling them, okay, you can spend this money on food, but you can't, you can't use them to buy cigarettes or booze, okay? Uh, I'd be okay if, that's, <laughs> if that were the case. You know, if they had food stamps that said, well, they already do that, right? You can't use food stamps to buy liquor or to buy cigarettes. It can only be used for food, right? So it's already, that kind of restriction is already there, but it's not going to stop there. Because everybody is going, to be use CB, is going to use CBDCs, right? If you have a government that doesn't want you to buy cars that run on gasoline or that don't want you to be eating real meat or don't want you to engage in any activity that they do not approve of, you will not be able to spend your money, okay? They're in control of your money. And if they're in, in control of your money, then they are in control of your life. They will determine the life that you will have. This is the central evil of CBDCs. So as this term, CBDC, becomes more pervasive, and you start gearing up toward rolling it out and shifting from fiat currencies into this, this new form of, of currency, I want you to be well-educated about what it really is. And you should push back in any way you can think of write letters to your congressmen and your senators. The thing is here, okay, the government, they have all the guns, right? <laughs> they, make, they, they make these kind of rules. They could, at some point, you know, outlaw fiat currencies. They could outlaw those dollar bills and those British pounds and those Australian dollars that are in your wallet. They could outlaw them and they'll be worthless. That is what they're eventually shooting for. We have to resist this. So this is why... My first recommendation out there uh, of a three-pronged approach is to extract yourself from the traditional financial system as much as possible. The only actual money in the world is gold and silver. This is the only actual money. Fiat currencies are fake. They're not real money. They're currencies. We call our dollar bills money, but it's not really money. It, it's misnamed. We use it just out of convenience. It's easier to say money you know, than currency all the time. But fiat currencies are made up. They're not backed by anything. Gold and silver is the only actual money in the world. So you have to get some gold and silver. I've got a program for that called 7K Metals. Reach out to me and I'll be happy to fill you in on the details. I've done videos on them. And then you have to develop streams of passive recurring income. That's my third stream, right? I mean, you know, when I was watching uh, this whole event, you know, steam was coming out of my ears. I was so angry. Uh, but I think most people are not really aware yet at what these global elitists are trying to shove down our throats, okay? And they're really close to succeeding. So I want you to be aware of what's going on and do whatever you can to prepare yourself against it. That's it, a quick one. Please like this video, please subscribe if you haven't, and please give me a comment. Edward Anderson signing out. Copy that.